awesome. What was the next big thing that happened? Because there's, there's um, unfortunately, things went kind of weird after that. Like, um, there was MLG finals that year, which was Captain Jack was there as well, and Asim went, and he got like fourth. Like, he had a disappointing performance there, but I still don't know too much about that tournament. Apparently, it was weird in the sense that only the invited players were there, so it was like an eleven man tournament, but it was extremely high level or something like that. But um. And then shortly after that, Azen actually took his first, like, uh, retirement. Like, he, you know, took a break from the game for the first time. Um, and Chu, for whatever reason, had, like, alliance himself with the West Coast. I know he was housing Ken and Isaiah for Game Over. And he was probably talking to them at, like, FC and TG6 and stuff. And I guess he just got close with Ken's family. And uh, once Azen stopped playing... Oh, yeah, the other things were Andin moved away that summer. He moved to Arkansas with his family, and like I said, Mild had kind of lost his passion for the game. And Jay Tannic, can't, can't remember exactly what happened to Jay Tannic at this point, <laughs> but uh, that I want to say he like got a girl pregnant, but I feel like that's wrong because now he has like a three-year-old. So okay, <laughs> basically something happened with Jay Tannic that prevented him from playing as much as well. And uh, so that I mean H two L at that point is kind of just me and Chu. And since Chu had started, you know, swearing his allegiance to the West Coast, I I pretty much, like, was just H2IL by myself when 05 started. So, um, I needed a new teammate, obviously. The opening 05 event for MLG was actually DC, so it was, like, right in my neighborhood. But um, it sucked in that sense because if it had been a year earlier, we would have had H2IL in full force, like, probably taken, like, t like six out of the top ten like we did in, in before and all this stuff, but... It was just me instead. And uh, I teamed with Neo, which was actually... Neo, like I said, had been an up-and-coming player for a while. And at that point, he had established himself as like maybe top five in the region. And uh, we, we did really well against Ken and Isaiah. And I remember that's one of the first times I was like, maybe I actually have some kind of knack for teams because we took Ken and Isaiah... Um, we took a, a game or two off them, which just was huge at the time, you know. And uh, we thought we were doing really well versus them. So... It just kind of showed that I I had some kind of knack for teams, I feel like, because um, me and Neo didn't necessarily have uh, very good communication or teamwork. Or, actually, we had pretty good teamwork, but it wasn't anything, you know, um, specific about Neo as a player that would make me, you know, compete with Ken and Isaiah. So I just felt like not only was there good teamwork between us, but I just had a knack for teams. Um, and then singles at that tournament was kind of weird. I think I got, like, fifth. I don't remember exactly who I lost to. Um, I think I lost to... Two in losers, but I can't remember winners. Um, but the top three was Ken, Isaiah, and Chu. So, two had shown that, you know, he's able to be consistent. Although, I'm pretty sure they all split, which is why Chu didn't fight Isaiah, because he probably would have beat him again. Um... And, but it also kind of just started, like, the, I guess, the new era without H2IL, kind of. And, it, I mean, I wasn't too happy about it. Like, it's way different being at a tournament without the support of your crew. And um, just knowing that even if you don't necessarily do the best, you might have a crew member that wins or something like that. Like, that whole aspect was gone. And not only that, but, you know, Asm was obviously my best source of training, and he was gone as well. So it started sort of a rough patch in Smash for me during that year. Yeah, with um, with regards to Chu, did he? I mean, he started dating Ken's sister at that point, right? Um, the, I don't know if they started dating yet, but they were definitely talking a lot and like flirting and stuff. I I think they actually only became official like in like '06 maybe. So, but they had definitely started talking and everything. And I believe, I'm guessing Chu stayed with Ken's family for TG6, which was another big reason why um that happened. And I'm guessing, you know, the, the sort of downfall of H2I also had to do with it. Chu recognized that, you know, our crew's falling apart here. We be, we have, like, two members left. You know, I might as well switch something up. So that's why he started uh, talking to Ken a lot. And I don't, I don't know if he went over there too much in 05. I know he started going over there regularly all the time in 06. So, but he definitely started building, like, his friendship and, like, loyalty to the West Coast. <laughs> um, let's see. What, what would... What's that, uh, what point are we up to now? Um, it's like 05. Um, I'm trying to think of other majors that happened that year. Was it FC3? Was that that big 
Yeah, yeah nice. that that was it in the summer. I'm trying to think of okay, so there was a a bomb tournament, which is best of Maryland's best in that spring, and that's where Azen came back. And um so Azen to come back from his first hiatus, he obviously won the tournament, but that was that was one of the first tournaments where I was able to take a set off Azen. I beat him in winners and then he came back in losers and beat me or in finals and beat me. But um it also showed me that I was kind of um, pulling ahead of everyone else in the region because I was pretty consistently getting second behind Azen. And I, I, I beat Chu at that tournament as well, but he was using, like, Falcon for some reason. But um, it kind of showed that if I wasn't, you know, uh, the second best in the region, then I was, it was at least, you know, close between me and Chu. So um, then once Azen came back that kind of added fuel to the fire of the whole east coast versus west coast thing because when Azen retired you know west coast was like oh we're better and we couldn't really say too much other than we have chu who's starting to swear his allegiance to the west coast anyway so that didn't work out but um wes i believe was the one that got the ball rolling on that was just all right um there's no way to really tell if we just keep having majors because ken might win Azen might win and even then you can't claim a region better so the Kishes had come up with the idea of the crew battle somewhat recently to that, and uh, and Wes was like totally intrigued by the idea. I believe he posted a thread about it, and then the Kishes saw it, and they're like, okay, FC is perfect for this. And so they made that the main event. Um, regional crews, there was four regions, East Coast, South, Midwest, and West Coast. And before the tournament, I mean, pretty much everyone thought it would just come down to East Coast versus West Coast, which it did. But just the hype generated by, like, any of the matches, like, Midwest versus West Coast ended up being pretty close. And, of course, the Dark Rain combo that he did on uh, Isaiah, you know, things like that. It just, it, it was, like, unprecedented levels of hype in Smash just because not only are you supporting maybe your crew member or your teammate, it's, like, your whole region when you're, you know, cheering for your, your region. It's not just those people there. It's, like, everyone that plays back home and stuff like that. It was really cool to represent your region like that. And um, it actually, like I said, it was the main event. It became, like, so hype toward the end because they saved, they smartly saved West Coast versus East Coast for last and ran all the other crew battles. And then, surprise, surprise, it was West Coast versus East Coast for the championship. And uh, before that crew battle, I remember we were having... This was, first of all, really cool because FCs ran in a church. So they have all these, like, rooms you can use. We had this conference room with all these chairs just like this, you know, sitting around a big round table, and we're, like, talking about fucking who we're going to send in and shit. And I remember <laughs> one time Wes walked in. This is pretty unrelated, but Wes walked in, and uh, someone had given us all, like, a piece of powdered donut. And they are like, all right, as soon as Wes walks in, wait till he turns around to close the door and then just chuck the donuts at him. And he's just... <laughs> So he turns around, he's like, yo, what up? Close the door and just gets all these powdered donuts right in the face. It was so funny. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, that tournament was a lot of fun all around. Did, did, did he also do the man toss you with that? Oh, no, that wasn't, that That started uh, That started at TG6. Oh, yeah, he did at FC3, shit. Yeah, he, he had the man sauce. It was like this insanely hot sauce that they got from uh, Washington State. It was actually like the extract of the sauce. It wasn't even the sauce itself, so it was even worse. And um, at TG6, he would just, people would be asleep, and he'd, like, put it on their mouth or, like, on their fingers or something and just wait to see what happens, and it was never a good reaction, ever. So, and I remember actually, like, hearing about the man, because they would post it on Smashboards in, like, big, bold red letters, and they're, like, he, they just called him a really good Void player, and he's, like, unstoppable, I guess, because he has the fire. <laughs> but, um... Like, I, I was, like, mad at first. I'm like, dude, who the hell is the man? I bet he's not that good. I'd kick his ass. And then I figured out it was, like, a hot sauce. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess he could maybe take me on then. But, yeah, no, I, I got a little bit of the man at FC. It was it was not fun. <laughs> I, w I got, like, really mad at Wes. I, like, started talking shit about him in Smash, like, when I was, like, trying to get the hot sauce off my lips. <laughs> with, the, with the, as soon as the, um, uh, you, you mentioned the, the, the funness of the, just the, the whole event like it was there was there tor torpedo ball and some other like games there yeah um torpedo ball actually we found the next year but there was dodgeball there definitely i mean it was just like a smash experience it wasn't just a tournament because the church was the venue as well as where you're sleeping um so it was just like an insane amount of like interaction between smashers at all times like it it was just loads of fun which is why I mean, I'm sure you've seen for the latest FC, all these people are immediately hype, and that's because they've been to the previous FCs, and they're just a blast. They're so much fun. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, as soon as the crew battle got underway, like, was was the tension like kind of? Um, during the first couple crew battles, it wasn't like too hype because it was sort of the obvious ones like West Coast versus South. That was a wash, and fucking us versus Midwest was pretty brutal too. So. Um, there was still hype, though, I mean, because, you know, those players still wanted to represent their regions, and there were still some cool combos and stuff that went down, but pretty much everyone knew, you know, everyone was waiting for the real main event, which was East Coast versus West Coast, and the the pressure was so serious before that, that we had one player, um, one of our starters drop out due to nervousness, um, and that was uh, Hayato. Hayato said, I can't take the nerves, I can't do this. And then right before we were about to start the match, Mike G actually came up and said the same thing. He's like, dude, I don't think I can do this either, man. We're like, dude, are you serious? Like, is this really that hype that p multiple people aren't aren't like able to contain their nerves around this? Like, that's crazy to think about. But um, we ended up convincing Mike G to stay in because we needed him. We needed a really strong peach. Like, we had Crazy Jones, but he was specifically our Ken counter for Ken's Fox. And we figured Ken was probably going to use Fox because he'd been using Fox a lot and... He had one of the earliest uh, really well-developed runaway foxes, so it was a very good, you know, tactic at that time. So um, we convinced Mike G to stay in, and he ended up doing really well, so we're glad he did. But just the fact that, you know, two players were ready to drop out that soon before the event, it was just crazy to us. And so we actually had to put in uh, KM as our alternate, and he was like an up-and-coming player in VA, we knew how good he was, but not too much of the rest of the East Coast did. So a lot of people were kind of shaky on that one, but he didn't even end up having to play. But um, just the whole time during the crew battle, like we were so into it, like just the amount of trash talk going on. Like it was looking back, it was definitely like top three smash events, like in my memory period. Like it was one of the most, if not the most hype moment in, in Smash ever. And just the fact that, you know, all these people are getting together, representing their regions, and it's this intense. Like, just, I, I believe we had the perfect buildup of, like, regional rivalries and, you know, uh, crew, uh, like, deciding who was going to be on the crew and stuff like that, all leading up to the tournament. And it just created, like, this insane environment to play in. So, and not, not only that, but uh, Bach had started recording at that point as well. And so he was putting a lot of production quality into it. People knew that, you know, they would their faces would be on camera and all this trash talk was being recorded and all that stuff. So, I mean, it was just a crazy experience for the time. Like, it was really awesome. Yeah, yeah. How did it feel when it started getting obvious you guys were going to pull ahead? Um, well, it was, never, it was never too obvious. Like, it was a very intense battle for the most part. I remember it started with uh, West vs. Hugs, which was crazy intense. It's just two Samus's, you know, duking it out, and Wes was also our captain and the most vocal, and so he's talking shit as he's playing hugs, you know, like, he, he did not pull any punches, it was just a great way to start the match, and then it was very back and forth, though, um, I believe we had a, a lead almost the whole time, and then I think Ken was the one that, against Killer Or, he, like, almost evened it back up, Killer Or only got one stock off him, I think, and so that put Ken's three, and we were only up a stock at that point, and now we're running down to... Um, I had already taken out Isaiah at that point, which was huge, and um, but I was out, obviously, as well. Another big thing about that crew battle was Chu played for us, even though Ken's family strongly tried to influence him otherwise, and he fucking raped. He took six stocks, including off of Peach, which, you know, Peach destroys Ice Climbers, so especially back then. So that was a huge deal that we were kind of iffy going into it, too. We are like, shit, you think Chu might try to, you know, pull some shady shit in Sandbag or something like that? But he didn't at all. He went all out. And fucking a really cool thing was uh, Wes and Chu had, like, a very strong, like, rivalry. Um, they had had, like, a heated tournament set where Chu actually won, but... Um, West timed it out and the tournament host was like, yeah, sorry, we're playing sudden death. I didn't want someone to lose by like a percent or two. So instead you were up by a hundred percent. Now you lose. Like, I don't see how that's fair, but yeah. So they, to, you know, they had, they had kind of a bad history or whatever, but, um, during that crew battle, you know, choose doing this stuff. Like I remember specifically Popo grabs, Nana, um, spiked them back down and then chewed down smash and West goes alley-oop. Like, <laughs> he was just getting so into it. He was like, I can't believe I used to hate this nigga. Like, shit like that. Like, dude, he was just... It was so awesome to see the support. Like, especially just having DA, man. Like, a bunch of, like, black dudes from the, from New York City. You got... That's that's huge for trash talk. <laughs> so, um... 
Um, like I said, Chu was a big factor in, in keeping the lead for us, and then Ken brought it back. Crazy Jones was like our secret weapon to neutralize Ken, and it worked out perfectly. And then um, it came down to um, DSF was in, and we had to put in either Azen or... No, no, no. Actually, Azen was in, and he beat their second-to-last player, and then DSF came in. And Azen had three stocks to DSF's four. So we're over here trying to get KM ready. Because this dude's an alternate, you know, he hasn't been to very many. I don't know if he's been to any out-of-state tournaments. Um, and we know how good he is, like, on a local level. But we just wanted to make sure, you know, he was mentally prepared to be, like, the savior of the East Coast. So um, we were trying to get him ready because we're figuring, okay, Asin will probably take, like, two or three off this guy. And then Cam will be able to finish the job. Asin just fucking went in there and did it. Like, he just took out DSF. And Asin has that ability in Cruz when he's the last player to just do ridiculous things and you know it really came out there although it was also nerves on dsf's part um he had a couple like he tried to up and pulled out the chain off the edge and stuff like that so but i mean it really came down to as in being like clutch as hell and he's always you know one of the best players to save for last and cruise because he will not give up his stocks very easily so um I mean, it was it was just incredible. Like when, especially just having Asim pull it out was kind of symbolic. Like, <laughs> just because he's the best player on the East Coast, and like I said, we had the, we had like this dance we were working on, so everyone got up and started fucking dancing. Like it was just a blast, man. Like I, that was one of the best feelings ever was beating them. We did that kind of like seal the deal, East Coast is better. Than yeah, I mean, for for the most, I mean, it's not you know, it's not like a forever thing. Like, okay, now we're forever better. But at that point, at that point, there was there wasn't much West Coast could say. Like, it went when when that came up as an issue on the boards. Like, you know, they 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 pretty much held their tongues, which was awesome because it had been you know two years in the making that that rivalry of of just baseless shit talk, and now we had something to base it on, and we won. So it was definitely awesome that prove you guys that you just had like a bigger um like a deeper roster or that like uh individually you guys were better or that like you know knowing that ken and isaiah were still like superstars on that right case? um it was definitely the deeper roster we just had uh like our our depth was crazy compared to theirs they had a few players like for example i can name uh bill fireboy um is a peach player that killer or did like the three second rest on that, I mean, he, he definitely wasn't on the level of, like, the rest of the people in that crew battle. Um, and then Blaine was a Fox player who was pretty good. But, you know, they just had a couple players who weren't, like, up to par, whereas all our players were, like, knockout players. So that I think the depth is really what did it for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Well, what was the rest of FC like? Um, it was it was a good tournament. Like, what after, I feel a lot of people kind of... Um, excuse me for using this term, but blew their load in in the crew battle. And then, you know, kind of a lot of people were kind of meh about singles and didn't didn't give it their all or whatever. But um, I know Azen got like seventh or something. It was a disappointing performance for Azen. Um, Chu got like third. So Chu did really well. Um, can't remember about Isaiah. I know Ken won um, over Sastafer in final. So Sastafer was starting to show that he was a really legit top player um, as far as peach goes because there wasn't really a top peach by that point so it was kind of him um I'm, well mike g but mike g never had like the level of victories that sassifer did which was taking out ken and stuff like that so um yeah i mean it was a good tournament overall but like i said that that was definitely the the most hype part and the main event was the crew battle and it was it was so awesome to be able to take that um did you start to see like you know uh was pc chris part of this no um pc came out later that year um or he was at a he was at the new york tournament i went actually was he part of that see now i'm getting fuzzy i think he may have been actually but i'm not 100 percent on that but that was right around the time he was you know starting to rise to prominence so i'm guessing probably um i know gs2 occurred i want to say around that time as well in 05 and uh and pc got fourth at that so Based on that, I'm going to say PC was probably in it as well. And so, you know, that that just shows our depth, you know, as in me, Chu, PC, Wes, Mike G. Like, there's just so many good players on East Coast. Crazy Jones, who is our Ken neutralizer. Oh, yeah, he was another top peach, but he didn't get to travel as much. That was kind of their downfall. Hayato and Crazy Jones crew was, they came, to, came out to New York sometimes, NFC a couple times, but they didn't get to travel as much as they wanted to, so. Yeah, yeah. Was, um... 
At, the, at this point, this is like 2000, end of 2005? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's 05 still. Yeah. Um, Ken has been winning, like, in terms of MLG, it's like first, 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 yeah, first, yeah. first, first. Um, was that their kind of answer to, you know, the crew battle? Like, saying, like, oh, you guys might have... You know, um. Well, we see, it was a... Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they still pretty much had claims of having the best player, but the difference was we we had so many tournaments, um, so many MLGs that, you know, as there, it was rare to have Azen and Ken both attend one. Like, the, I don't think that ever actually happened. Azen went to a few, and he won those, and Ken went to a bunch and won those, but, you know, they never had one where they're both at. Until um, MLG Atlanta 2005, that year, I, I didn't go, but I heard about it, and it's, like, one of the most intense things because Azen actually uh, beat Ken in winners, and Azen hadn't beaten Ken in a set to that point, so that was a big deal. He beat Ken in winners, and then Wife, who was, you know, up-and-coming player, actually got this close. You should ask him about this in the interview later. He got this close to beating Ken. Like, he was so close to beating Ken. And I was I was watching this on stream, and I was so hyped. I was like, oh, my God. You know, Wife is, like, he just started playing, like, a year ago, and he might fucking beat Ken. And he was, like, literally that close and barely lost. And then um, Ken ended up coming back and beating Azen in, in finals. But those sets were really good as well. And it just kind of showed that Azen had a little bit of a mental block when it came to fighting Ken. Um, like, he's just, I guess, the numerous victories that he already had over him, let, he let him kind of affect him, his play too much. And Because uh, I don't think Ken was really, you know, in top form at that tournament. If, you know, he dropped the set to Azen and then almost lost a wife, but he still ended up taking it. And uh, so that was the first time they actually met that year. So at that point, yeah, West Coast still had, you know, claims of having the best player but East Coast was better overall. Totally, totally. Um, we're now kind of like what, what the, the next kind of big bullet point, I guess. Um, I would say it would be like MLG05 Championships yeah. was like, um, it was, I that might be like one of those tournaments that it's like you can feel the transition from new school or old school to new school. Um, PC did really well there. I think PC beat me at that tournament, and uh, Ken still won. But just a lot of new players. Crazy Jones, I believe, did really well. Um, a lot of new players were getting top eight. Um, it was just showing that, you know, even though Ken, Isaiah, and Azen are still clearly the top three, there's other players coming out that, that are, you know, able to compete. Yeah. Was Bomb Soldier a, an issue before that? No. He, we only heard about him at uh, the, the Garden Tournament, Jack Garden Tournament, where, you know, he rose to prominence. But... Japanese scene was like so like separate from the American scene. There was very little other than Captain Jack was like the only like interaction we had at all. So we didn't hear about him until Ken went over for the Jack Garden tournament. But there was PC, there was Crazy Jones, and then there was also some I mean, a lot of other players started playing around this time and didn't actually rise to prominence till later. Well you might hear about like a mango or like a PP. I'm sure they started playing in like oh five, oh six, you know, and then got really good in like oh seven, oh eight, so was um I guess the hype from uh, Jack Garden tournament was um, like ooh there's this you know who could bomb soldier beat da, 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 da. yeah yeah um, did you kind of like watch those videos and like look at, at Falco a different way or? yeah I mean I definitely I saw the videos and I was really impressed you know um, Falco there was clearly a lot more tech available than people were using and I mean that's something we all kind of knew for the longest time like those first few years when melee came out we kind of knew that uh the tech tech skill was clearly like had more potential than we were really putting into it necessarily but um i guess we just kind of felt like it was too much effort to really try to push the envelope of of tech skill that much because it it wouldn't necessarily like show results in tournament that was the other thing was that we were still under the impression that mind games were paramount and that tech skill was secondary, which is, uh, we now know it's more of a balance, but um, we, we really thought that a smarter player would almost always win over even the mo most technical player. So that kind of was an eye-opener of, okay, tech skill is really important, and there's clearly another level of it that we haven't gotten to. Um, and I'm sure that the Bomb Soldier videos were a huge inspiration for PC and for Shiz and for, you know, all the upcoming Falcos that started coming out, PP. Um, but... It, it's really hard, like I said, to 
Um, it, we looked at it kind of a different way because Bomb Soldier isn't someone that's about to start coming to the U.S. and playing in our tournament. So we kind of just looked at it for inspiration. It was hard to be like, okay, you know, I think I could beat Bomb Soldier. And it didn't even really matter because I was never going to fight him. Like, it came down more to, okay, this guy did really well against Ken. He's also, he was 14 years old, which I thought was cool because I was 14 when I beat Ken. But, uh... Um, it just showed that there was another level of tech skill and the, the metagame was clearly not being pushed far enough. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, M2K an issue at all at this point? Um, he started becoming an issue in 06. Basically, 06 is like the rise of like the first generation of New School, which is like M2K, PC, Korean DJ. And all three of them basically came to prominence at the same time. PC had kind of, you know, started developing on a little bit earlier, but M2K... Um, had gone to some local tournaments around here even and uh, and had gone to a couple majors and just he wasn't like at, at, at that level yet. Um, he didn't have any level of mind games really. He was just relying totally on his knowledge of frames and stuff. Um, Korean DJ, we just didn't hear about at all. The funny thing is I remember hearing or I remember Aura saying before one of the um, MLGs in either late 05 or early 06, he's like, I'm going to go up to the, he was talking about uh, perhaps going to like a regional tournament up in Massachusetts. And he's like, man, I'm just going to go there and end up losing to Korean DJ and getting like 13th. And we all laughed. But, you know, a month later, Korean DJ is like breaking out and getting top eight at MLG. We're like, wow, <laughs> spoke too soon there. <laughs> but yeah, no, like Korean DJ came out of absolutely nowhere. M2K and PC, we at least saw the development. But M2K, I think, really had the breakthrough at MLG 2006. I mean... The MLG opener 2006 was such a big deal because everyone knew how big MLG was now. Melee was starting to get huge. Um, that was that might have been like the biggest year of Melee's growth was 06. And um, basically everyone knew the level of play that you had to be at to compete. So because of all these tournaments that had happened, you know, it was very established. So Azen also retired again, by the way, after the um, 2005 championships, which was actually early 06 when it happened. Asm retired again, so he wasn't around for those first few MLGs in 06 either. And, uh, I mean, that obviously affected me a little bit because that's my training and, and uh, partner usually. So I teamed with Neo, and we did decent. I think we got, like, third or fourth. And um, I did. I was very disappointed in singles because my bracket was PC second round and then uh, M2K. And M2K beat me in losers, and I got like 17. So I was a huge disappointment for me. It kind of affected my Smash career overall because I was uh, heavily planning on going to the next MLG, um, but I didn't get top eight. And top eight um, was what determined if you were a pro player, and you get a travel stipend for just going to the event. So um, you know that was a big deal for me. I, I I started to think, you know, okay, maybe I should retire as well, like as it is. Um, but in those next few months, I think at some point, Asen decided to come back, and that's really what sparked my interest back up. In because um, I I was still going to locals in that time, but H two O was pretty much dead. Um, you know, Asen wasn't playing, and I didn't have any trouble winning locals, but I also just didn't get too much like pleasure out of it. Like you know, okay, this is cool, but I don't even have my crew with me or anything. You know, this is kind of lame now. But then Asen came back. And he was really excited about it. He was like, okay, you know, now that uh, there's this point system and shit, like, let's see what we can do with uh, with the points, um, given that we've already missed a couple events. So, I mean, I didn't actually miss one, but, you know, I basically missed it with my performance. So, um, so we go to Chicago of that year, um, you know, bought our tickets and everything, which is a huge deal. It was my first time flying to a tournament. And uh, so I was really excited about the whole thing. Um, and we actually both did really well. Um, Azen got fourth, I believe, and he lost to M2K. Now, I, that was actually one of my better performances at an MLG, was that Chicago tournament. Um, I lost to Ken second round, but then I had a really good loser's bracket, including Hugs I beat, Husband, KDJ. I beat all three of them in a row. Um, I forget who else I beat. And then I had M2K. And... I barely lost to M2K Game 5 on Mute City. After he had already taken me to FD and Chang grabbed the shit out of me in Fox Ditto's, he took me to Mute City and Chang grabbed me the shit out of Fox Ditto. So, like, I I was very upset about that because I was playing really well that day and I knew it. I beat KDJ, who I had never beat before. 
and you know I could just tell that I was on point and then M2K just chain grabbed me to death so um and then what was really upsetting about that though was right after M2K beat me he beat Azen and you know that ended Azen's tournament and Azen would have had Chu and then Ken and I feel like you know, even if Azen hadn't beat Ken, that would have been an incredible finals, and he definitely would have beat Chu, at least, so, um, I was upset about that, but then, teams at that tournament, um, MLG, or, sorry, PC, wait, not even PC, M2K and KDJ, so many letters, <laughs> M2K and KDJ, um, we're teaming for that, and they're, you know, like, the new school representative team of, like, ne this new era of Smash where, like, it's very technical and, and precise and all this. Um, they actually took out Ken and Isaiah 3-0 in the winner's bracket, and we're like, oh, my God, really? Did that just happen, you know? Like, because Ken and Isaiah actually had dropped their first set at MLG New York that year, but they ended up coming back and beating PC and Wes, who, who were the ones that beat them. They beat them in the finals. So, you know, they still had never lost a tournament. And so them getting 3 0'd was just unheard of, you know, especially by these two upcoming players. So, um, Azen and I, that was our first, that was one of our first like major tournaments where we team. We actually closed at the 2005 Ender 2. And this isn't something I wanted to bring up, but that was where, uh, Ken, we played Ken and Isaiah in finals and they beat us and uh, Ken did the no hands thing. I don't know if you heard about that. Because um, Ken grabbed Azen. It was down to two versus one. And Isaiah started uh, doing the infinite A. And Ken just puts the controller down and goes, Oh, no hands. Look, I don't even need hands to beat you and stuff like that. Because I had been talking all this shit about Mana Cloud, his brother. Because he had done awful with Chu. And, you know, I was just really rubbing it in. But, uh, you know, Ken... that. Was, Looking back, I mean, I gotta give him, I gotta give him some credit there. I can't really say shit about that. It was just one of those moments where you're like, man, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, um, so we we had already played them before Ken and Isaiah, but you know, I think we took a game or two, but they still beat us pretty soundly. But that did also show that we got to finals that you know we might be one of the better teams out there. So we play M2K and KDJ in the winners finals of this, and I think we beat them three two. So right after that, we got really excited, like, damn, we might take this thing, you know, depending on what happens to Ken and Isaiah, because we, we were still kind of under the impression, Ken and Isaiah come back, we're probably going to lose. <laughs> um, so Ken and Isaiah almost lost to PC and King, that was it. It was on Rainbow Cruise, and Isaiah made this stupid two versus one comeback, where, like, it wasn't even just stupid that Isaiah did amazing stuff, because he did, but it was stupid on PC and King's part, because they just fell apart and kind of gave him the match, and I think they were up, um, that would that would have been game point for them, but then Ken and Isaiah ended up coming back and winning, so, um, right after that, I think was Losers Finals, and, you know, the way MLG worked was, if you played someone in winners, that set carries over, so it's now... Uh, M2K and KDJ with a 3-0 lead going into losers finals first to six. Ken and Isaiah won six straight. Yeah. They just came in 6-0 and we're like, oh fuck. <laughs> we're about to play these dudes that just 6 0 M2K and KDJ. So the first set starts and we're actually doing pretty decent. Um, I think they started off 2-0 though. So we're kind of like, okay, this, this set's kind of not, not going to happen. But we did take one in the first set which I think was huge for, like, momentum and confidence and stuff. So they win the first set, and then second set, um, Asin started using more Falco. And that was our main team, Fox Falco, but Asin was using a lot of Marth and Peach and stuff. But he focused on Falco for those first few games, and we went up 2-1. So that was a huge deal. You know, we're like, okay, counterpick's in our favor. Um, I think they beat us on Rainbow fourth game or something gay like that. And then uh, game five... Uh, we're thinking about it. We're like, okay, um, your Falco is doing really well, but have we ever lost Fox Peach on Dreamland, like, ever? And so we just took them to Dreamland as and went Peach, and that was it. We fucking took them out. Like, I remember the moment where I was like, oh, my God, this is happening, was when I edgehogged Isaiah, his last stock, and I, I, I stayed on that edge for so long. I was not giving that shit up. I was making sure that dude was dead. So fucking, like, as soon as Isaiah was dead, I mean, Ken... Ken is clearly the weak link on that team, to be fair. And that's that's obviously saying more about how good Isaiah is than how bad Ken is. But um, And he was Fox as well, so we knew he wouldn't be able to pull any crazy stuff with Marth. So we just, you know, clutched it out, like played solid, didn't get too over 
excited because like I said, when I killed Isaiah, I knew that was it, but I had to, you know, keep my composure until we killed Ken. It was just, it was incredible. Like I, I did not stop talking shit to Ken for like five minutes. <laughs> it was so great. It was just the revenge for, you know, the whole no hands thing. And like all these years of like them just dominating teams. And, you know, we had, we had underperformed in singles a little bit to where we wanted as and didn't get to fight Ken in singles, but we brought it all back just by beating them in teams for the first time ever. That's the first time they ever lost a tournament. So it was also kind of like, you know, similar to when I gave Ken his first loss in singles. So it was just, I mean, that rivalry, you know, me and as in Ken and Isaiah has just been like a constant thing. Like ever since then, like as far as teams go from like 06 to 07, pretty much the two best teams consistently were me and as in Ken and Isaiah. Man, that must have been such a feeling. <laughs> it was fucking awesome, dude. Like, it was crazy. Like, they literally, three years straight of never losing a tournament, and we finally took them out. Like, it was huge. It was a huge deal at the time. Like, I was, I, I would not shut up about it <laughs> for a long time. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, cool. Did that, did, did Asim feel the same way? Did he, was he like... Oh, yeah. I mean, he was really excited about it. I could tell, like, Asim was a little bit disappointed because... You know, the crazy thing about Azen is he had just come back from a hiatus, but he was already, like, his goal was first, period. Like, in singles, like, he knew he was capable, and um, despite the fact that he... For some reason, those first few... I mean, this didn't happen the most recent time, but when Azen would take retirements, it seemed to, like, clear his mind when it came to Smash, and he would come back even better somehow, even though he hadn't been playing at all. Like, he would sometimes come back legitimately better than he was before, and it's crazy to think about, but... Um, he was a little bit disappointed about singles, but that ended up setting the stage for MLG Orlando, which I'm trying to remember who took Ken out of singles at that tournament. Um, I know KDJ was one of them. And I can't remember who else. Maybe Isaiah, actually. I think Isaiah did take him out. Um, I did pretty decent there as well. I got top eight. But um, someone took out Ken, so Asim was, you know, basically the favorite to win it at that point. Um, Asim played Ken, KDJ right after he had beaten Ken in the same exact matchup and dominated him. So, Marth versus Sheik. And, you know, that's a good matchup for Sheik, which has made it not too surprising that KDJ beat Ken. Like, that's one of those uh, upsets that's still an upset, but you kind of expect it. But Asim ended up wrecking KDJ. Chu came all the way back through losers and beat KDJ in losers finals, and then that set up Asim versus Chu. Now... Azen and Chu had been playing Falcon vs. Ice Climbers money matches one night, apparently, and it started off at his... Azen doesn't really money match, so I'm sure he was mostly joking, especially because of what ended up happening, but he starts it off at a dollar. By the end of the night, Chu owed Azen, like, two million dollars. <laughs> Purely Falcon vs. Ice Climbers the entire time. Like, Chu didn't win a single one, and he just kept double or nothing, double or nothing. So Chu owes Azen, like, two million for that. <laughs> Still don't think Azen's seen that money yet, but... Um, so basically, like, Azen knew that match inside and out, and the way he played it, because the other crazy thing to think about that is Chu always beat Isaiah every time, and it was almost always a sweep, like, Chu had a very strong, you know, like, advantage against Falcon, it seemed, but Azen went in and just made it look like a joke, like, he just did, he never landed within range of being grabbed, he always pushed him with a knee or a side B or something, he never, like, gave Chu the opportunities that I guess Isaiah would give him enough to, to end up winning, but he never gave Chu those opportunities. And even Chu was really looking to win this because Chu had not won an MLG all year. He's been getting the second second to Ken regularly, but never won. And um, Chu was really on point as well. But I remember one specific match was probably the turning point of finals was... Um, Asim was down three stock to one to choose Ice Climbers on Stadium, and he just brought it back and won. Like, it was insane. I was I was freaking out. I was I was by the commentator's table, like, freaking out. But, um, yeah, and so Asin ends up taking the whole thing over Chu in Grand Finals. Like, it was Asin's first MLG victory for a, a long time, you know, and the fact that he had just come back from a hiatus made a lot of people like, holy shit, Asin just came back, and now he's already winning, like... That was a huge deal. Um, we actually got second in teams there, but it was a really good set as well. Um, that was a set where I almost made like a five-stock comeback in teams. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, it was against Vigio and M2K, which I think was the loser's finals of that. But 
Um, we three won them, and the only match we lost, I almost made like a five stock comeback on them. It's ridiculous. Like I just missed one shine that probably would have sealed the deal. But yeah. Um, so I mean, it's just like Asim was clearly on top of his game, and we were clearly kind of on top of our game as a team too. So that that was definitely awesome to go from you know a few months earlier I was considering possibly quitting or whatever, and now like we're back on top. So it was sweet. Um, I figured now would be a good point to maybe take a quick break. You can grab a smoke. Uh, Word. And uh, if you want to mow down on that. Um, the blueberry muffin. Blueberry muffin. Yes. Right. Much. All right. Cool. Uh, so maybe we can jump right into the um, the New York opener, the one with okay. PC one. So yeah. Um. That was. I played PC second round of winners at that tournament. I think I took a match off him, but I could tell he had like really stepped his game up a lot. And um, he, I think, was fighting Chu that tournament. I actually told him a trick to use to get out of the chain grab as Fox, just because Chu was, you know, West Coast at that point, and I, I really didn't want to see Chu and Ken just split all the winnings as usual. So I told uh, I told PC how to get out of Fox's chain grab or out of Ice Converse Chain Grab as Fox, and that ended up like helping him because he used Fox to beat Chu, and that was his biggest obstacle trying to fight Ken. So he finally got to Ken, and the matches were just insane. Like looking back, the easily the highest level of play of melee we had seen so far, and uh, PC was just pulling out all kinds of new tricks that we hadn't seen before. It was really, really hype. I mean, since there were so many people, like a lot of people were watching, and you know, everyone got really into it. Wes was obviously talking a lot of a lot of smack. So, um, I think it came down to the last match too, like the the very last match of the second set. So PC ended up taking it, and it was just ridiculous. Like it had been a while since Ken had lost the tournament, and. The, just the fact that it was like this new like up and coming player you know it just it gave a lot of people like inspiration who were just starting to play melee like okay this guy's still new and he just beat the best player so it gave it really opened the the door not only for i mean mlg was you know creating the scene helping create the scene with all these tournaments and all these prizes but just the fact that all these new school players were doing so well was also encouraging the new players that wanted to get into the scene as well so yeah, when he um, you know, up, up till that point had um, you know Ken every tournament he entered he pretty done pretty well except for like flukes and stuff. Yeah, I mean that was like TG six where he got ninth, but I think other than that, that might have been the first time he lost a tournament. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's pretty crazy to think about. Were you were you pretty excited that he? Uh... I mean, yeah, I was, since since Asm wasn't around, um, you know, I didn't have anyone to really root for when it came to beating Ken, so, you know, I was very excited that it was PC, and like I said, he's obviously a really nice guy, so we had, we had uh, become friends at that point, and I, I also told him how to beat Choose Ice Climbers, so I was helping him out in that regard, so, I mean, I definitely was looking forward to seeing PC win the whole thing, I did. Nice. Um, so, uh... Maybe let's we can we guess we can hop to the end of the year with the playoffs uh, to touch on as in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we had the MLG playoffs, and we had started to get very familiar with. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Damn, PC looks so young. Which which one is he? <laughs> oh, yeah, we have to talk about your Packers jersey too. Really quick. Oh yeah. <laughs> Should I start with that? Yeah. Okay, so day before game over, I bought this shirt, and <laughs> ever since then, um, I mean, I since I did so well at game over, I started to consider it kind of a lucky shirt. There's some some rumors going around that I don't wash it and shit like that. It's not true. I wash it. It's very regularly washed, but <laughs> I did uh, start to wear it to almost every tournament. So it became kind of like a trademark, I guess. People started to recognize it. Um, a lot of people didn't seem to notice that I upgraded to an actual jersey rather than just like a Packers t-shirt. Um, but I did do that at some point in like 07. I got a far jersey. And then, of course, the Packers won the Super Bowl. So I had to upgrade to an Aaron Rodgers jersey, and that's where I'm at now. 
you had gloves too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some Packers gloves going on. I got a hat as well, Super Bowl champion hat. So, I mean, that was, dude, when the Packers won the Super Bowl, that was huge. Like, even though it doesn't directly affect Smash, it was still, like, awesome just because everyone in the Smash community knew I was a Packers fan. So, it was pretty sweet. Nice, nice. Awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, the. Uh... Oh, yeah. So, um,. The playoffs of that year we had started getting really familiar with the the top halo players actually and they were they were so about smash like they really thought it was really cool and a lot of them like admitted to us that it seemed to take more skill than halo which was funny but um one of the top halo teams was called carbon team carbon and we got so friendly with them at one point that they were trying to, I guess, um, like the Carbon Company or whatever was trying to expand uh, its sponsorships to include other games. And so we were actually Carbon as in and Carbon chilling for that tournament. Um, wife and husband were in on it too, so they were representing Team Carbon. And uh, the crazy thing about that tournament, MLG playoffs, um, Me Too King, Team with King, um, Ken and Isaiah were there, obviously. And... Uh, M2K and King took out Ken and Isaiah twice, not just once. So we didn't even have to deal with Ken and Isaiah. Me to King and King did the dirty work for us, and then we just beat them and ended up taking teams. So um, that was actually a huge payout, $2,500 a piece. Still the most money I've ever won from a Smash tournament. Because uh, the, way, the way singles was structured, you had to have like points to get in. And basically... If you weren't top seven in points, there was only one spot left to get into that final bracket. And we all knew it was going to be as and kind of. So I, I wasn't too too concerned with singles. Um, even though I didn't make it out of the amateur bracket, I lost to Dave and someone. But whoever made it to the sec, there was actually another amateur bracket to see who got that last spot. And Asim was in that already. So it was kind of like, yeah, Asim's definitely going to get this. So um, Asim did end up winning that. Um, and... The first, the first round was just full of these ridiculous matchups, but obviously the most ridiculous was Ken versus Hazen, because Ken was one seed, Hazen was eight seed, since he was the one that had won the, 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 you know, the spot. So they were fighting first round. Um, M2K and KDJ was another ridiculous one, four and five seed. Um, and the winners and losers of those respective matches played each other. So that just created like a monster bracket, just ridiculous. And uh, so Ken is up uh, two matches to one on Azen. I remember the commentators started talking about um, Azen's loser's bracket. Now, I wasn't even here yet. I was still asleep at PC's house like an idiot, and I'm really pissed off that I missed this live, but um, Azen was down three stock to one on Stadium, and he just started like the most one of the most ridiculous comebacks in Melee history where it's like the best player you know, arguably the best player in the world at that time, and you're down three stock to one and about to lose a set if you drop that match. You know, it's not even the deciding match, but, you know, he he didn't have any more matches to give. So just the fact that he did that, not only did he, you know, make that comeback, but he did it without any support from his crew because we were asleep at PC's house. Like, that's ridiculous to think about. And like I said, Wife, um, the commentator, started talking about his loser's bracket, then all of a sudden couple tippers later as in won the match like it just was ridiculous ken also had a, a, a couple clutch texts but you know as in would not let up at that point there was nothing there was nothing ken could do once as in got a tipper and sent them off the stage on his last stock so as in at like 130 on his last stock just brought it back and then ended up like two stocking him last round so he won pretty solidly so that alone remains the only time as in's ever bested ken in a tournament ever because he, he beat him in a set at Atlanta, but then, you know, Ken ended up coming back and winning. That's still the only time ever that Asin's bested Ken. And the, the fashion that he did it in, like, that's that's one hell of a way to break a mental block. Let me tell you that. So, um, KDJ beats M2K. So, that sets up Ken versus M2K, first round of losers, and Ken loses. Yeah. So, that was just, you know, for, for Ken, that was a huge deal. Like, he had never... Other than TG6, he had never, you know, not won a tournament or at least got the finals. And now he's not even going to get to, like, semis or anything. So, um, hold on one second. Horrible for him. And, uh, Azen ended up winning singles at that yeah. as well. Yeah. So, Azen takes a singles tournament. Um, we good? Yeah. Okay. Um, Asin takes a singles tournament and teams with me. So 
The other funny thing was um, Carbon, a member of Carbon won the free for all Halo 2 tournament, and Carbon won the the you know teams tournament for Halo as well, the 4v4. So Carbon basically swept that whole tournament since me and Asin were technically Carbon, which was really funny. But uh, Asin ended up taking seventy five hundred dollars home from that tournament. Yeah, just one tournament. That's insane. That's one of the highest payouts you know ever in Smash. And uh, obviously it would be outdone a month later when there was the championships in Vegas. Um, I don't like talking about that tournament because it was bad for us. Um, Azen did not do very well in singles. He lost to, I know he lost to Ken, even though he was um, beating him at first. And then he ended up losing, which was pretty disheartening. Um, another crazy thing about that tournament is, for some reason, Isaiah just posted on Smash Forwards, I'm going to beat Daniel Chudet, like, which he had never beat him before, obviously, ever, and, uh, and it kind of just seemed like one of those things where it was, like, a given for Chu to win that, and Isaiah just posted, I'm going to beat Daniel, and he beat him 3-0. Yeah, so, that's one thing I'd like to mention about Isaiah. He has this thing about him where, at least... In his prime, it seemed like he could literally pick when he wanted to win. Like, he could just f decide, okay, now I want to win, and he could win that match if he felt like it. Like, he, it, it's something I've never felt with any other player, where it got to the point where if I was beating him, I thought he f was sandbagging. You know, like, I, I, I literally, I was like, okay, you must not be trying because, you know, I'm, I'm beating you, and I, it shouldn't be happening. Like, he... I'm sure, like, a lot of old school players will tell you this as well. He had this kind of aura about him that just seemed unbeatable if he felt like it, which, you know, didn't happen too often. But that's also why he was such a monster in teams, because he always tried in teams, you know, because I guess he didn't want to let his teammate down or whatever. But he n almost never gave it his all in singles, especially after the first few years, you know, game over, FC, things like that he would try at, but... Um, the MLGs, he started giving less and less of a crap about singles as time game, time went on, and, uh, eventually got to the point where, like, people didn't even consider Isaiah a threat in singles, not because he wasn't good, because he never tried. So, um, the fact that, you know, he just pulled that out, I'm gonna beat you this time, even though he's beaten me every single time, and then he 3-0s him is just insane, and it kind of, it kind of illustrates that a little bit. Um, as in also beat Chu there, so Chu got last, this was a, obviously a ridiculously stacked bracket, but, um, Chu got last, as in actually got fifth, he lost to PC, he lost to PC and Ken, oh, so, no, he lost to PC and winners, I remember now, so as in versus PC was first round, PC wins that, um, which was already a disappointment for us, because I, I was thinking Asin's probably gonna win this thing, because he had just won playoffs, you know, he had won Orlando, there was no reason to think Asin didn't have a strong chance of winning, and he lost first round, he beat Chu after Chu lost to Isaiah, and then, so that Ken versus Asin match was actually for fifth place, loser gets fifth, so that's brutal, um, uh, Ken ends up taking that, and get, ends up getting taken out by KDJ, who goes on to lose finals to PC, so PC took a ten thousand dollar check home like that that still blows my mind and obviously that's like the peak of his accomplishments in melee but like i know i mean very few people have won that much in melee throughout you know and just to to say that you won that in one tournament is ridiculous but um it also just showed that even though that mlg season had so many twists and turns it ultimately sort of start, ended where it started, which was PC really making a name for himself and showing that he's a top player. Whereas in the middle, I feel like it came, It started to be more about Asin's comeback. And then it just, at the end, PC just brought it back and, you know, really showed that that was his MLG season for the most part. Yeah, yeah. So. Was that really like the last bit of MLG? Because I know in the next year... They... No, they, um, basically after that tournament, they're talking about, um, you know, future future smash at MLG and they took it off the pro circuit, which was really upsetting for us, because that that's part of what creates the hype is being in this environment with hundreds and hundreds of video game players, even though most of them were Halo, but still just the fact that you have this whole venue just to play this game is, is ridiculous and um, they started by, they started 07 Circuit by having a little, like, grassroots event that they got a venue for. It was a nice venue and everything, but there was no hype. Um, 
It was a decent turnout. Um, Isaiah did come over. M2K was there. Me and Chu went up. And um, I think I got fourth or fifth or something like that. It wasn't... Even though, um, you know, there was decent prize money and a, some, it was a very meager turnout for an MLG, even even though it wasn't a real MLG, so to speak. It was like 40 to 50 people. It was just really, you know, not, not a... It was a very disappointing turnout. So... Um, after that though, they went a different route, which was sponsoring fan run tournaments. Like, uh, they started with pound two. They also had, they sponsored FC diamond that year. And, um, there was one other, I can't forget, or I can't remember. Um, I think it was on the West coast just based on the fact that, but anyway, um, so that was kind of their, their transition was we can't have you on the pro circuit anymore, but we'll try to help you guys out. So, which was nice of them. But like I said, it just wasn't the same as having it on the pro circuit. It was a really, really big difference. Yeah. So no more girls. Yeah. No girls and, and, you know, like short shorts and handing out free Red Bulls and shit like that. That was, oh man, that was awesome. <laughs> You said they had to cut off Mewtwo King one time, right? Oh, man, that was actually uh, Mao that told us that, but I, I never heard about that. But that's hilarious that they had to cut off Mewtwo King. It doesn't surprise me. And, I mean, the cool thing was that the bouncer knew, like, all the Halo pros. So, you know, you couldn't, like, the Halo people couldn't really do this. But we just handed off our pro badges to, like, our friends all the time, and they would go get free Red Bull. It was so sweet. Dude, those were the days, man. I miss that. But, yeah. Um, after that, like... MLG kind of fell off in terms of Smash. I guess it came back up with Brawl, but, you know, I never got into that, so. And what did you think when Brawl came out? Um, basically, it was, like, the new game to play. And at first, like, at least until we had given it a chance, we weren't going to write it off. Even though, you know, based on what we had seen and heard, it clearly wasn't going to be Melee. And it wasn't going to be the same type of game e either. But, um, we... We tried it, you know, we tried to make it fun, I guess, but after a while, after a few months, it became clear that, like, the engine was just designed to really, really reward defensive play, and to the extent where, you know, hanging on the edge for most of the match is a legitimate strategy and things like that, because I can get over camping being a huge deal. I mean, defensive play is always good in general. It, it makes sense that you're waiting for the opponent to mess up rather than trying to put something out that you might mess up, but you know, taking it to that extreme is just, it's no longer fun to me. Like, you know, it's its more about the competition, which is why I feel like there is such a scene for Brawl still is because of Melee. Because Melee was so competitive, people wanted to make Brawl just as competitive. And you can, just not, it's not pretty. <laughs> so, I mean, we can see now the way Brawl has evolved. I don't, I don't like the way it's evolved at all. I mean, it's... It's very, very heavily um, into running away, and, you know, Olimar is now second on the tier list, I saw. Like, things like that just make it ridiculous to me, but those first few months were really fun. I mean, as and I got the game, like, the Japanese release early, and we just played the crap out of it. So, given that we were already, you know, the best in the area at Smash, we just dominated for, like, months, and we didn't have to play lame to do it. We were still, you know, approaching and doing all this cool stuff. But we were still winning all the locals, and we made a decent amount of money those first few months, you know, especially because the brawl scene was exploding. But I'd say, like, summer of that year, not even too long after its release, that's when people, most people started to realize, at least people that had gone to Melee tournaments, that this is not a legit game for tournaments. So that's about when I stopped. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, um, in the time we have remaining, um, mm -hmm. I'd love to get your opinion on, like, you know, personalities of some of the players, um, like... M2K and, right. and um, what do you think about M2K? M2K, um, when he first came out, I despised him. I He was everything. He represented everything terrible about the Smash community. Like I was saying earlier about how cool it was when we found out about DA and that they're not just these basement-dwelling nerds. M2K was that basement-dwelling nerd. You know, like I, I was really upset. I was like, if you... Especially when he started to get good is when I really had a problem with him because... I didn't want this guy to be the face of Smash, you know? And um, I, for that reason, I was I was kind of mean to him for a while, which I, I do regret because it was kind of baseless, you know, just the fact that he looks like a nerd. <laughs> but um, after a while, like, 
I I actually got to know him pretty well. He's he's a he's a very nice guy. I mean, he never he never means harm. He just he's not the most considerate person in the world in the sense that um he doesn't often think about, you know, what other people are thinking or feeling. So, he might do things that offend people or things like that without knowing it, but he never means harm. So, he's a very nice dude overall. Um but like I said, when he when he was first coming up, like I I was not a fan of the fact that we might be represented by like you know this basement dwelling nerd look, so I was that was the main reason you know I wasn't I wasn't a fan of his at first. But after a while, I've, I've grown to like him. Yeah, and it seems like the community I think has kind of made him a little more you know a li- at least a little a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. But yeah, definitely he. I mean, if you compare if you talk to M two K now versus five years ago, he's way more personable. You know, he he's definitely improved in that respect. So. Um, did you ever get a chance to play Mango at all and, and see that kind of beginning of that second generation? <coughs> I did, actually. Um, I might have been the beginning of it because uh, Evo 2K7, um, I flew out there, like, I got a ticket because she was telling me about it, like, a week before the tournament, so it was a pretty expensive ticket, and um, we get out there, and um, it's going, you know, it's pretty much like Chu said, just a bunch of scrubs and then like eight good players and a lot of money on the line. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. Um, Mango. Sorry, sorry, one okay, sec. no problem. Okay. Um, so yeah, Evo 2K7, Mango actually beats M2K in a best of one because they had some crazy system where up to a certain round of the bracket, it was just one match and M2K apparently didn't know. He made a big stink about it, but you know, it was what it was. He got two stocked, I think, by Mango's Jigs on Dreamland. I'd never heard the name Mango ever before that, ever. And I'm like, okay, who is this random kid? But M2K had been known to have his like major flukes like he was the kind of person where you know he's really good but if he messes up he messes up bad so i wasn't too concerned about it um and i was really just like yes someone beat m2k and he was supposed to be in my bracket great job mango and then i play mango and he actually beat me as well and the crazy thing was uh he beat my fox and i just i wrote it off i was like okay uh i suck first jigs i don't get a lot of practice it's a bad match i'm just gonna go marth and rape him he like wrecked my Marth even worse than my Fox. He was uh he was doing a lot of stuff that I just had not seen Jigs do regularly. Like I would uh badly space a forward smash on a shield, you just jump out of shield and rest me immediately. Things like that. Um were very new to like the Puff metagame and so I lost to Mango also. I'm like, shit, I did not expect this. Now I have to go through losers, you know, and there was um on it was a two day tournament so the first day the last match was to see who got in the top eight because they were doing all the top eights for all the games and it was me versus M two K and I'm sitting there thinking all right I just spent like five hundred dollars to get out here like even if I get seventh that's like three fifty or something that's not gonna pay me off but you know I I need to make that at least you know I can't go home empty handed and so I went chic against M two K's Marth and actually just beat him two zero like it was. There was nothing like special about the set that I can remember. It was just like solid play by me and and a constant desire to not lose because I would be losing five hundred dollars. So um I did end up taking M two K out of that. He was really disappointed, but you know, I I was I did not feel bad for him. I'm like, dude, it's either you or me. <laughs> and I'm sure he won more than for Melee than I have, so um the next day, I played Chu, and Chu ended up beating me, like, barely, but we still saw Mango, um, he beat, he almost beat Ken, actually, he did beat Ken in winners, and then he almost beat him again in losers, and it just showed that, you know, this kid from, like, no one had heard of him before, and he used a not necessarily top-tier character at that point, um, and he just came out of nowhere and almost won the tournament, like, it was, it was crazy, so... That was definitely, you know, the next new generation. And that was uh, 
not really close to, but somewhat before the release of Brawl. So, you know, that's that's where I'd say the first generation of New School was M2K, KDJ, PC, which was like 05, 06. And then 07, 08, when Brawl came, starts to come out, there's like Mango, J-Man, PP. And that's the newer, newer school that we're seeing now become, you know, the top players. So, yeah. um, What would you say as kind of a you know, wrap up? Right. Um, you know, looking forward to the future of Melee and to your career and looking back, um, your impressions on where the game could go, like if, uh, like, like, can the community get better or can it can it get revived? Right. Or are we just waiting for the next Smash to come out? Um, well, first of all, the next Smash, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my, <laughs> I wouldn't bet on that. So, um, as far as melee goes, you know, I used to. I used to be of the mind that, especially after MLG stopped, that it's just, it's downhill from here. You know, we can try to coast this out as long as we can, but, you know, it's it's not going to last. But it's really seen somewhat of a revival. I mean, not, I'm talking mostly locally because uh, I can't speak for, like, all regions. But at least around here, we had a 60-man local a few months back. And that's up from, you know, 15 to 20 is what we used to get on average. And all of a sudden, we have this huge tournament. Um... And there was no, like, out-of-state names. It was just all local people, you know. But that just showed that we actually have the the players. We just need the tournaments. So, I honestly, I'd like to see Smash take more of a, a, a fighting game community approach, which is sponsorships, um, consistent streams, um, things like that, that really promote, you know, competitive play and help it grow. Because people see this game on stream all the time you know they're gonna start to be like okay this is cool maybe i want to try this whereas they see the people who go back and watch tournament videos afterwards are already players you know rarely are you going to see a, a non-player just watch like the finals of a tournament or, like very often um but streams you know that's something you could put on facebook people will click it just to see what's going on and they might get interested so um really high production quality is important with that too so and that's something that the fighting game community has been doing a lot but i don't see it enough in smash at all that's the types of things that melee will have to do but if if the community handles it right i could easily see melee continuing on indefinitely as a tournament game i mean it at this point it's probably the oldest game that's still played in tournaments um it the crazy thing about it though is that I see these TAS videos, the tool assisted, like um, where they're doing it frame by frame. And I just see that no one's ever going to reach that level of play. The ceiling for the game is unlimited, which is what makes it crazy. Like the, I've been playing this game for, you know, 11 years consistently, competitively the entire time. But I still see this video and my mind gets blown. You know, it's it, and it's not even necessarily, you know, tool assisted. I saw uh, that player Dark from Chile, and that was also insane. I thought it was tool assisted for a while. Like, you know, it's there's so much potential still there for the game to grow. So as long as that's there, I see no reason the game would, you know, necessarily die out. It to me, it's really dependent on how tournament organizers and players in the community handle it. And if if they handle it well, then, you know, there's a lot of potential there for it to grow. Like, as we've seen in our local scene, it got up to 16 people out of nowhere. Um, it, it's something that can happen everywhere. There's no reason it can't. It's just, I really think um, it, it might not be enough of a priority for most people at this point um, to, to really grow the scene anymore. But I don't see it dying out necessarily anytime soon. It's just that people have to put a lot of effort forth to actually, you know, do these things. But I mean, things like FC, things like that give me hope, you know, the, there's a new FC this year, which is first of all, just really cool because it's a throwback to the old tournaments, but it's going to have all these new people. But it also shows that, you know, even at this point, the, there's major, you can announce a major and immediately have hype. You know, it's, it's not beyond the point where where melee is dying or anything like that at all. It's just that it's hard to it's also hard to grow the scene at this point. You know, it's in that phase where the people who play now regularly aren't going to stop anytime soon, probably. But it's very difficult to get new people in, which is why I said, you know, I, I think we should really focus on professionally run tournaments, sponsorships, streams. Those those things will really help bring the new crowd out versus just maintaining the old crowd. Yeah, yeah. So. What is Smash meant for you? Like, you know? Damn, what a question. Um, I mean, most of my conscious life, I've been playing Smash. Like, it's, 
it's more than I mean it's this cliche statement but it's more than a game like it's you know it's literally part of my life um, most of my close friends most of my best friends I've made through smash um, it's it also just shows like I feel like the reason I get along so well with smashers is it shows their excellent judgment that they chose to play this amazing game <laughs> so <laughs> I mean there's partly that but you know it's just it brings people together that otherwise would not have been brought together. Like I, that I was saying earlier about, you know, how we met DA and everything. Like, there's no reason for me as like a 13 year old high school kid to be hanging out with like these 20 year olds Bronx people. But you know, it, it happened and it was awesome and we actually got along and laughed with each other and stuff. You know, it's the I really like the fact that it brings together people from from every walk of life. Really, you know, it except girls. But you know, we'll work on that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome cool man was there anything else you want to Let's see if we have any time to do that um yeah what time is it uh, it's 3 oh okay you're good um let me think any cool stories you could probably keep on going for another three hours <laughs> <laughs> i definitely could um let's see i'm trying to think of stuff i might have forgotten because yeah. we kind of skipped through a lot at the end there yeah Oh, they had uh, Cataclysm. Um, oh, yeah. There was a VLS, which was, like, the last major before Brawl. And that was another time where Azen came out of retirement and won, <laughs> like, again, part three. Like, it's crazy how you can do that, man. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Although, this last time it didn't happen, you know. But it was also by far the long. Like, all the other ones were, like, three or four months versus, you know, a year and a half or something. Yeah. So With, the, with Apex? Or? Mm -hmm. Well, um, he officially came back right before Pound 5. Oh, okay. So, but that was, like, a week before Pound 5. And we tried to, like, do something in teams, and it didn't work out very well. But we got ninth. I mean, it's better than nothing, considering he hasn't had him played in a year and a half. But um, he's just, like, he has... Like, I mean, I, I mentioned this so many times already. The kid just has such a knack for games that it's ridiculous. You know, choose like that too, actually. Yeah. And that's actually one thing I'll talk about is that um, I used to think that I had no talent whatsoever for games and that the only way I could get good at them was by playing the shit out of them. And I used to be insanely jealous of people like Chu and Az and like, man, you guys are just fucking prodigies of this stuff. Like, and it's not just melee. Like, Chu and Az and both, if we're playing, you know, other video games, will usually catch on to stuff the fastest and and all of a sudden be winning. And we're like, what the hell? We just started playing this game, and you guys are already better than us. Like, stuff like that. But I think I just had that level to compare to, and that's why I thought I sucked at games. But you know, looking at it more now, like, I'm, I'm pretty decent at Street Fighter, and, you know, I can I can get into a game just not as fast as they can, so, I mean, it's, I guess it, it'd be my recommendation to anyone who thinks that they aren't, don't have a natural talent for games, just keep at it, like, even if you don't have, like, that initial burst of, like, amazingness, like, as an in Chu, you know, it, it's all always the possibility that you're actually amazing, you just need to put the time in to get there, I mean, because there is a difference between, you know, me and M2K. Like, first of all, M2K has put in way more time. But even if we had put in the same time, you know, if if I had put in the same amount of time to Melee as M2K had, I'd be a monster. Like, I'd be ridiculous. There's, there's a talent for the game that certain people have and certain people don't. I've actually talked about this extensively with some people. I call it the spark. <laughs> some people just have the spark and some people don't. And you play Melee with people and you can tell, like, right off the bat, like, okay, this dude has spark, this dude does not like pc chris just insane amounts of spark and it's like different levels of it too but you know it's that's what i've been calling it for a while is just some people have the spark to just take the game to new levels and some people don't like i mean i hate to put m2k out there like this but he's a perfect example of someone that doesn't have spark but he's also a good example for people that you know think they don't have spark but they want to get good like it's still possible man but you just got to put in the work so i mean it's it's just, like, the fact that this game has, like, you know, created this much, like, of a community and this many people brought together is is insane. Like, just blows my mind thinking about it. Yeah, it is, it is nuts. And yeah. it's gone on this long. It's now, right. like, 10 years gone. Mm -hmm. and, or 10 years on. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. My, uh... 
The tenth anniversary of my first tournament ever is coming up in like a few months. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? I don't know. Maybe I should hold like another tournament. You should, you should do another tournament yeah. at, the, at the launch. At the American Legion, dude, that'd be sick. How might do that? Huh? Why not? I was actually think I was starting to think about uh possibly doing like a tenth anniversary for Game Over, but that wouldn't be till twenty fourteen. Oh, that's but, true. But no. that's like very early on. By then the movie will be out. Ah, there you go. <laughs> play it there, big gun. There we go. Pre premiere of the movie. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, we'll see where it goes, man. I'm definitely don't plan on uh, stopping Smash anytime soon. So. That's good. Shit. <laughs> um, sweet. Well, this is. <coughs> I wish I had another couple days to be here and get more interviews. Would you be down to do like a Skype interview at all? Um, yeah. Because they just get a little more. Uh, if um, I, like... I don't have a webcam except on my phone okay. though. But I could do it on my phone. I don't know how that okay. works. It doesn't have to be um, video necessarily because I know oh, Skype okay. does. It's amazing the audio quality of Skype. Really? Um, uh, you know, I just like you know, I was talking to somebody and, and I was like, this is like leagues better than a phone. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So that that could be an option. Word. Um, so. Sweet. Sweet. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks so much.